This is Sarah Mikeso, and today we're here with Dr. Liz Wagstrom. She is the Chief Veterinarian with the National Pork Producers Council. Thanks for being with us today, Liz. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I understand you were in Eastern Europe recently. Can you tell us a little bit about what you learned about the uh, outbreak of African swine fever there? Sure, I've been really fortunate. I've made three trips to Eastern Europe in the last five or six years, watching as it spreads. So we went through Russia the first trip, then the second trip, we're in the Baltic nations with Poland, Latvia, and Lithuania. And just this January, we're in Poland and then Germany and Denmark to assess how they're mm -hmm. preparing for a potential outbreak. And so what we've learned is that um, they have countries that have very good programs of animal identification, veterinary oversight, and are able to identify outbreaks. Mm -hmm. They're identifying outbreaks with official diagnostic tests and then are taking steps to stop movement of animals, to depopulate positive farms. The other thing they're doing that they've had to do because it's in their wild boar population is that they're doing things like paying hunters to um, turn in found dead wild boar. Oh. They're asking hunters to have their um, boar that they have um, captured or, or taken to be tested before they're um, used for any um, consumption of meat. They're also disposing of the, um, if they're field dressing, they're now disposing of any offals, et cetera, in boar proof resistant mm -hmm. like cisterns so that they're not spreading virus. And so they're really po focusing on diagnostics in the wild boar to see where the positive populations are, yeah. as well as in their, in their domestic sites. And then what they've done that's allowed them to do that because they have such a strong surveillance program is they've really been able to regionalize and say this zone is negative, right. this zone we have found positive wild boar but no domestic pigs and then in the zone three they have found both domestic and pigs as well as wild boar positive. So really being very proactive in some of their right. efforts. Absolutely, they're doing hundreds of thousands of diagnostic tests. Wow. They're paying millions of euros as far as for depopulation yeah. costs, for surveillance costs, um, as well as doing research around the disease. Wow. And so it's an all out European Union effort to try to try to control the spread. It sounds very coordinated as well amongst all these countries that you're that you've talked to. Absolutely. The European Commission has a very transparent program. They have um, program standards and and they may vary a little by country, you know, as far as, you know, what they may be paying or how they may be in um, right. incentivizing people to turn in boar, things like that. But, but there's a very transparent look at mm -hmm. what the situation is. They've got the diagnostic tests, yeah. the movement records to back up those, um, those claims they're making right. on freedom. And, and so it's a, a very coordinated effort. That's great. And so, and so what were some of the other things that you learned while sure, you were Sure, we learned that obviously the biggest challenge with the domestic herds are um, smaller farmers that have outdoor pigs that may have contact right. with wild boar. So does it seem like eradication is really an option in some of these countries, Liz? Well, we know that in the Mediterranean countries, as recently as just a couple decades ago, they were able to eradicate. And they had to worry about not only feral pigs mm -hmm. as well as their production, but also the soft body tick. Right. So with um, work around proper diagnostics, controlling movement, truly feel that eradication within the domestic pig populations right. is possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's more challenging in the yeah. wild boar populations. And so that's the question is, do right. we just keep trying to tamp it down in the wild boar population and protect the domestic pigs yeah. and then consider maybe a compartment of domestic pigs we know are negative mm -hmm and then the boar population is under control but not necessarily absolutely eradicated. Yeah. And is that what's necessary for trade to begin? Is that accurate statement? Trades always can be tricky because right. it'll be country to country negotiations. Obviously the easiest thing is to say here's a line, this is negative, yeah. that's positive. Right. A and it's can be done with proper diagnostics and surveillance. You can say we're confident right. this is negative and this is positive. When you get to a compartment where you yeah. say we believe our domestic pigs are right. negative, but we have positive wild boar, 
I think you can do that. You can test enough. You can have confidence that your domestic population is negative, mm -hmm. but it's that negotiation is right. how confident will your trading partners be. So obviously, a robust surveillance, robust testing, robust control of, right. of movements is going to be essential to d establish a compartment. Very good. And um, any other highlights from your trip? I think one of the things that we were so impressed with was how each of these countries was transparent, yeah. how they told us, showed us their systems. We visited farms, we visited hunting clubs, and we really saw that there was a sense of urgency, that this is a, a situation they wanted to handle, that they were committing the resources, that they were um, rigorous in their controls, rigorous in their testing, and that, that it was a national effort. And, and that was very, very impressive. Very good. Well, thank you so much for all your time. Well, thank you. This is Sarah Mikesell reporting.